the very thing that they said would not work all of a sudden worked you know so that, that, that so those are the kind of things so um, i don't want to go into those details because like i said uh, to me i want to uh make sure that i don't cause them you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in hollywood is is to act like it didn't happen they all do the same job. Earlier this year, Cat Williams made quite a stir with his outspoken interviews. Beyond his usual trolling and exposing his peers, he delved into the dark side of Hollywood, talking about the powerful figures who pull the strings and control everything. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all. And, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. His words went viral and many people believed him, although there were still some skeptics. But when someone as legendary as Arnold Schwarzenegger steps in to back up Kat's claims, you know there's something to it. You might be wondering what Arnold Schwarzenegger has to do with all this. I mean, Cat Williams and Arnold are from completely different corners of Hollywood. But according to The Buzz, not only is Arnold supporting Cat, but he also has some stories of his own to share. This isn't just about rumors. Arnold, with his iconic career and larger-than-life persona, apparently has experienced firsthand the manipulative and controlling nature of Hollywood's Elite. Arnold's story is pretty wild. Picture this, one of the most recognizable and successful actors in the world, but even he wasn't immune to the whims of Hollywood's power brokers. He shared instances where he was turned down by casting directors for baffling reasons, which seemed to have more to do with politics and less with his acting chops. That. Everywhere I turned, they said, no, it won't happen, it's not going to happen, and forget about it. Luckily, I did not listen. Then there were those allegations of which Arnold claims were completely fabricated, aimed at tarnishing his image because he refused to toe the line. Just like Cat Williams pointed out, there are those in Hollywood who decide who gets to be in the spotlight and who gets pushed into the shadows. If you don't play by their rules or dare to step out of line, they have ways to erase you from the scene altogether. You know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Arnold's experience echoes Kat's revelations about these power brokers who can make or break careers on a whim. Let's dive in deeper. Arnold's political ambitions nearly hit rock bottom in 2003 when multiple women came forward, accusing him of inappropriate and unwanted touching over the years. The Los Angeles Times reported that a total of 15 women said Arnold had behaved badly towards them. These incidents allegedly spanned three decades and happened on movie sets and in studio offices. The allegations first came to light just days before Schwarzenegger was elected governor in 2003. The Los Angeles Times detailed several allegations of groping, making lewd actions, and even trying to remove one woman's bathing suit in an elevator. At first, Arnold and his campaign team downplayed and denied everything, sticking to a defensive stance. But then, in 2023, Arnold took a different approach. While promoting his new three-part biographical documentary on Netflix called Arnold, he revisited the issue and made some surprising admissions. Schwarzenegger confessed that he had been totally wrong. He admitted to behaving badly and recognized that his initial reaction was defensive. Reflecting on his actions, Schwarzenegger said, It is true that I was on rowdy movie sets, and I have done things that were not right, which I thought then was playful. But now I recognize that I offended people. To those people that I have offended, I want to say to them, I am deeply sorry about that, and I apologize, because that's not what I'm trying to do. In his docuseries, he went further, saying, Today, I can look at it and kind of say, it doesn't really matter what time it is. If it's the Muscle Beach days of 40 years ago or today, that this was wrong. It was bulls. Forget all the excuses, it was wrong. While Schwarzenegger did admit to his mistakes and offered an apology, it's clear that Hollywood has a long history of trying to bring down actors' reputations with serious allegations like these. Justin Bieber is one such example. In June 2020, Bieber faced accusations of SA by a woman known as Danielle on Twitter, who claimed that Bieber had engaged in non-consensual S acts at a Four Seasons hotel in Austin, Texas, in March 2014 while he was with then-girlfriend Selena Gomez. Bieber vehemently denied the allegations, stating that S.A. is something I don't take lightly. 
He provided evidence proving he was not at the Four Seasons at the time of the alleged incident and went on to sue for USD 20 million. Justin Bieber says it is factually impossible that he sexually assaulted a woman six years ago and says he's got the facts to back it up. Truly impossible. I want to be clear. There is no truth to this story. He also posted receipts showing he stayed at an Airbnb and not the Four Seasons on the night of the alleged attack. Another case involves Ansel Elgort. In June 2020, a woman named Gabby accused Elgort on Twitter of SAing her in 2014 when she was 17 and he was 20. Following this, three other women alleged that Elgort had solicited them via direct messages when they were between the ages of 14 and 16. Additionally, an April 2020 post by a French-speaking user circulated, showing alleged screenshots of Elgort soliciting her when she was 15 and he was 21. Elgort denied the allegations in an Instagram post, stating that he and Gabby had had a brief legal and entirely consensual relationship. Gabby tweeted this photo with Elgort, claiming Elgort sexually assaulted me when I was 17. I was so young and he knew that. Responded, Gabby and I had a brief, legal and entirely consensual relationship. He does, however, admit to handling their breakup poorly. Cole Sprouse, known for his role in Riverdale, also faced an allegation of S.A. A woman named Victoria claimed that Sprouse became aggressive when they returned to his room after a party at his New York University dorm a few years back. Sprouse denied all claims and took legal action. Cole Sprouse and Lily Reinhardt are speaking out after they and the Riverdale co-stars Vanessa Morgan and KJ Appa were accused of sexual assault and harassment by anonymous accounts on Twitter. I take these accusations very seriously and will be working with the right teams to get to the root of it. Similarly, Lily Reinhardt, another Riverdale star, was accused of S misconduct. She denied the allegations and tweeted a statement addressing the situation saying, I can't think of something more twisted than lying about SA. But it was proven that this account was created specifically for all stories about me and my cast. I can't think of something more twisted than lying about sex. It but that's not the end of Arnold's story. Beyond the Arnold's life continued to be overshadowed by media scandals and controversies. For instance, there was his very public and messy divorce from Maria Shriver after it came out that he had fathered a child with their housekeeper, Mildred Bina. The media had a field day with that one. For many years, this affair remained a secret, even from Maria. It wasn't until 2011 that Shriver discovered the truth, although the couple had already been seeking marriage counseling prior to the revelation. She come to you about the affair and the possibility of a child many years before, correct? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you admit to it then? Well, I just did not know how to. I was just, I think, too scared about losing everything. During one of these sessions, the Terminator star finally came clean. In his Netflix docuseries, Arnold Schwarzenegger recalled, in one of the sessions, the counselor said, I think today Maria wants to be very specific about something. She wants to know if you are the father of Joseph. And I was like, I thought my heart stopped and then I told the truth. The confession was devastating for Shriver. Schwarzenegger admitted she was crushed because of that. I had an affair in 96. In the beginning, I really didn't know. I just started feeling the older he got, the more it became clear to me. And then it was really just a matter of how do you keep this quiet? How do you keep this a secret? Reflecting on the impact of his actions, Schwarzenegger acknowledged, I'm going to have to live with it the rest of my life. People will remember my successes and they will also remember my failures. This is a major failure. I had failures in the past in my career, but this is a whole different ballgame. Dimension of failure. I apologized many times to her. Did she ever I asked forgive her you? for forgiveness and I hope that down the line she will be able to forgive me for that. Despite the initial secrecy and the subsequent fallout, Schwarzenegger and his son Joseph Bina have built a relationship over time. Bina has followed in his father's footsteps, pursuing careers in both bodybuilding and acting. On the Unwaxed podcast, he shared, I grew up with my mom and I was always nervous and I didn't want him to think bad of me and be like, what the heck is this guy doing? He's just partying all the time. Now it's like awesome. I'm so close to my dad and we talk about everything. Schwarzenegger has been a supportive presence in Joseph's life, including attending his graduation from Pepperdine University in 2019. He celebrated the milestone with a heartfelt message on Twitter. Congratulations, Joseph. Four years of hard work studying business at Pepperdine and today is your big day. 
You have earned all of the celebration and I'm so proud of you. I love you, but these scandals are nothing compared to what Arnold had to face to become the star he is today. His story begins in a small village in Austria in the aftermath of World War II. Born on July 30, 1947, Arnold grew up in Thal, a quaint village that was still healing from the war's scars. His family, devout Roman Catholics, lived in a modest home that lacked modern amenities like plumbing, a refrigerator, or even a phone. It was a tough, humble upbringing. Arnold's mother would often forage from farm to farm, collecting essentials like butter, sugar, and grain. His father, a former Nazi soldier, was an abusive alcoholic who made no secret of his favoritism towards Arnold's older brother, Meinhard. Arnold, often called Cinderella by his father, was seen as the weaker, less capable sibling, and he bore the brunt of his father's harsh discipline, enduring beatings and verbal abuse. Despite the harsh environment, the Schwarzenegger household had a strict daily routine. Arnold and his brother were up by 6 a.m. to do chores and had to earn their breakfast through sit-ups. After schoolwork and more chores, their father would send them outside to practice soccer, regardless of the weather. This rigorous routine instilled a strong sense of discipline in Arnold from a very young age. But Arnold's dreams were always bigger than the confines of his small village. At just 10 years old, Arnold began to dream of a brighter future in America. He would watch newsreels that showcased the happiness and success of people in the land of opportunity, and he would tell his schoolmates, I'm going to America, much to their disbelief. Luckily, one day in school, I watched a documentary about America. I knew exactly that is where I wanted to end up. While his father envisioned him becoming a soccer player and pushed him to train at a local club, Arnold had different aspirations. He was inspired by Reg Park, a bodybuilder who had won Mr. Universe, starred in movies, and built a business empire in America. Arnold saw Reg Park as the embodiment of his own dreams. One day, I was fortunate enough to see a bodybuilding magazine. And on the cover was this very muscular guy. Mr. Universe becomes Hercules' star. His name was Reg. The turning point came when Arnold was 13 years old. His soccer coach took the team to a local gym, and Arnold was immediately captivated by the weightlifting equipment. He picked up his first barbell and knew instantly that bodybuilding was his ticket to freedom. He now had a clear plan, build his body, win Mr. Universe, move to America, become a movie star, and then invest in business. Simple. I became more and more certain I had that vision very clearly laid out, to be a champion on that same stage where he won the Mr. Universe, and then to move to America, then get into movies. When Arnold decided to pursue bodybuilding instead of soccer, his father was far from thrilled. He immersed himself in the world of muscle and strength, covering his bedroom walls with posters of bodybuilders. This unusual obsession even led his mother to drag him to the doctor, worried he might be gay. But Arnold's focus was unshakable. He trained with a maniacal intensity, once even breaking into a closed stadium on a freezing Sunday just to get a workout in. Every painful rep, every extra set was just another step towards his dream. At 18, Arnold enlisted in the Austrian army to fulfill his mandatory service. Even in the military, he never lost sight of his bodybuilding goals. He skipped his army training to compete in the Junior Mr. Europe contest, won it, and promptly found himself in military prison for going AWOL. But to Arnold, it was worth it. The taste of victory only made him hungrier. His persistence started paying off as he placed second in another bodybuilding competition and was later voted best built man of Europe. This recognition put him in the spotlight and set his sights firmly on Mr. Universe, which he saw as his golden ticket to America. As soon as his army stint ended, 19-year-old Arnold hopped on his first plane to London for the Mr. Universe competition. He didn't win, but he caught the eye of one of the judges who was so impressed with his potential that he offered to coach him. Broke but determined, Arnold moved into the judge's crowded home above a gym and trained harder than ever. At 20, he made history by becoming the youngest person to win the Mr. Universe title. At just 21, Arnold had already made a name for himself in the bodybuilding world and decided it was time to conquer the next frontier, Hollywood. He packed his meager belongings and headed to the U.S., the land he had dreamt of since he was a child. With his insatiable ambition, Arnold didn't just focus on his brawn, he also sharpened his mind. 
He graduated from the University of Wisconsin with a degree in International Marketing of Fitness and Business Administration. At 23, Arnold became the youngest ever to win the Mr. Olympia title, a record that still stands today. He dominated the bodybuilding scene, winning competition after competition and smartly investing his earnings. Before hitting 25, Arnold was already a self-made millionaire. They immediately said, are you crazy? Bodybuilding is an American sport, forget about it, it's nuts. And then when I wanted to go into show business, after I won 13 world championship titles in bodybuilding. But breaking into acting wasn't as smooth. Casting agents and directors dismissed him, claiming his accent was too thick, his name too long, and his body too unusual. It was very difficult for me in the beginning. I was told by agents and casting people that my body was too weird, that I had a funny accent, and that my name was too long. Arnold once reflected on his website, you name it, and they told me I had to change it. Basically, everywhere I turned, I was told that I had no chance. You want to be what, a leading man? Oh, come on. I mean, look, uh, uh, first of all, let's start with your body. You're gigantic, you're like a monster. And then your accent, oh, it gives me the chills. What is it, Schwarzen, Schnitzel or something like that? People are gonna storm the theater and the movie houses because Schwarzen Schnitzel is starring in a movie. Oh yeah, I can see that already. Imagine Despite the rejections, Arnold's distinctive physique caught the eye of Andy Warhol, who used him as a model and introduced him to influential figures in the film industry. This led to Arnold landing a small role in Hercules in New York. Although his English was still rough and his lines were dubbed, this role ignited his passion for acting. Arnold's early film roles were small, but he was persistent. His big break came when he won the New Star of the Year award at the Golden Globes, which cemented his place in Hollywood. When Arnold Schwarzenegger hit 30, he got his big break in the movie Conan the Barbarian. The film was a massive success, leading to a sequel and paving the way for a string of iconic action movies like Commando, Total Recall, and of course, The Terminator. Suddenly, Arnold was a household name around the globe, known for his intense strength, deep voice, and powerful physique. His acting career was skyrocketing and his investments were flourishing. All of a sudden, I got a little break. All of a sudden, I got a TV show, a little part, then another little part, and then pumping on and stay hungry, and then, of course, I landed the big role of Conan the Barbarian. So Despite never planning to enter politics, Arnold's life took an unexpected turn when he married Maria Shriver in 1987. Maria was the niece of John F. Kennedy, and through her, Arnold became more involved in Republican circles. By the early 90s, President George H.W. Bush had appointed him chairman of the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. He later held a similar position in California, further solidifying his political involvement. Then came 2003, a year that would change his life yet again. California was holding a recall vote to potentially oust Governor Gray Davis, and Arnold decided to throw his hat into the ring. He announced his candidacy on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, a move that caught everyone by surprise. When the votes were counted, Davis was out and Arnold was in. He was elected governor and then won a second term in 2006. During his time as governor, Arnold's website proudly listed his achievements. He passed the Global Warming Solutions Act of 2006, a bipartisan effort to reduce California's greenhouse gas emissions. He overhauled the state's workers' compensation system, pushed through legislation to improve school nutrition, and promoted California tourism and products. Arnold's work as governor was impressive, leading many to wonder if he might one day run for president. However, the U.S. Constitution bars him from the presidency because he is not a natural-born citizen, though he became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 19. 1983 and still holds dual citizenship with Austria. In an interview with The Atlantic, Arnold revealed that of all his titles and accolades, being governor was the one he cherished the most. It was a role that allowed him to make a tangible difference in people's lives, which he found incredibly fulfilling. But as with many high-profile careers, Arnold's achievements were soon overshadowed by media scandals and controversies like the cheating and assault accusations. And it's not just Arnold, lots of other actors have had to deal with Hollywood's power players, struggling through high and lows while trying to find their place in an industry that can be as brutal as it is rewarding. Let's take a look at some other famous cases of blacklisting in Tinseltown. First up, we've got Tippi Hedren. You might know her from Alfred Hitchcock's classics like The Birds and Marnie, but behind the scenes, things were pretty rough for her. She's spoken out about how Hitchcock s aid her during filming. When she turned him down, he basically made her life a living hell. 
He ordered the rest of the cast not to talk to her and even set up his dressing room next to hers with a sneaky adjoining door on Marnie. He had ruined my career. I said, do what you have to do. I don't care. I'm out. And it's not just about S.A. Hedren also said Hitchcock blocked Universal, the studio she was under contract with, from submitting her performance in Marnie for an Oscar, and he prevented her from working for two whole years. Studios were the power, Hedren said in 2012. And I was at the end of that, and there was absolutely nothing I could do legally whatsoever. There were no laws about this kind of a situation. If this had happened today, I would be a very rich woman. Then there's Brendan Fraser, who was a big deal in the late 90s and early 2000s, especially thanks to his role in the Mummy franchise. But his career hit a major speed bump, and he says the former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, Philip Burke, is partly to blame. Fraser claims he was essayed by Burke at the Beverly Hills Hotel in 2003. After that, he noticed he was getting fewer invites to the Golden Globes, which the HFPA runs, and fewer opportunities in Hollywood. The phone does stop ringing in your career, and you start asking yourself why. There are many reasons, but was this one of them? I think it was, he said. Confession, he named Hollywood Foreign Press Association's president Philip Burke to be the assaulter. The actor claims Burke reached out to his behind, grabbed his cheek, and touched him between his... Also, there's Rose McGowan. The actress is one of several women who accused Harvey Weinstein of sabotaging their careers after becoming victims to his essay. In McGowan's case, she claims that she was R-worded by the movie producer round about the time of the release of Scream, and after settling out of court, he allegedly tried to tank her movies. They threatened me with being blacklisted. I was blacklisted after I was R-worded, because I got R-worded, because I said something, but only like internally, you know, she said in an interview published by The Observer. This is, this is an international Every single place he ever stayed, there are people there set up to help him rape. This is how it went. This is what it was. Ashley Judd and Mira Sorvino also had their careers stalled by Weinstein after rebuffing his SEX advances, and Peter Jackson admits to being a part of it. The director says that he was told by Miramax to not hire the actresses for Lord of the Rings. I recall Miramax telling us they were a nightmare to work with and we should avoid them at all costs, Jackson said. At the time, we had no reason to question what these guys were telling us, but in hindsight, I realized that this was very likely the Miramax smear campaign in full swing. I now suspect we were fed false information about both of these talented women. Next up is Randy Quaid. You probably know him from flicks like Independence Day and National Lampoon's Vacation series, but things took a sour turn for him while shooting Lone Star Love back in 2007. According to reports, Quaid got into it with a crew member, but it was his wife, Evi, who really stirred up trouble. She sent some nasty emails to the producers, shared photo of herself holding a gun with the cast and crew, and even broke the rules by filming rehearsals. As a result, Quaid got hit with a lifetime ban from the theatrical union equity, got canned from the movie, and had to cough up a hefty $81,000 fine. But it gets even weirder. Quaid claims he's being targeted by a group called the Celebrity Starwhackers, who allegedly want him dead. According to him, they've already whacked Heath Ledger, David Carradine, and Chris Penn. It's like something out of a movie, but unfortunately, it's all too real for Quaid. Then there's Corey Feldman. Back in the 80s, he was a big deal thanks to his roles in The Goonies and Lost Boys, but his career took a nosedive, partly because he says he was blacklisted for speaking out about the Hollywood pet claims he was a victim of. Feldman's been trying to get his documentary made on the subject, but he's had trouble getting financial backing because of who might be implicated. It's been a tough road for him, especially with his history of drug A stemming from the trauma of his A, but things might be changing. With the hashtag MeToo movement gaining momentum, Feldman's accusations are finally being taken seriously. These days, he's focusing more on advocacy work, especially around child A in the entertainment industry. So it's clear that blackballing is a real issue in Hollywood. Now we wanna hear from you. Which other actor do you think has been blacklisted? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.